Celebrating 15 years of this beloved foolery. I did not know that Eric Cartman was coming to the studio today. <laughs> I can't fight this feeling anymore. You, you sped me up. You sped me up. I swear to God, I did not speed you up. I did not speed you up. This is exactly what you sounded like to the people listening in the listening audience. It's time to bring this ship into the shore. And throw away the oars forever. <laughs> Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ. I ran across this and I started laughing. It was out uh, of some magazine. Uh, the, the, the top nine things bosses hate more than sick days. And um, one of the top ones here is emailing everyone. We've got a guy that we work with that hits reply all to every single email, and it's the most annoying thing. And and now I think actually we have another guy that does it. So now we have a couple of guys that will do reply alls. And sometimes I accidentally hit the reply all, but it's apparently something that your boss absolutely hates. The other thing that they hate is when you come to work sick. You may think staying home makes you look lame or lazy, but uh, spreading germs. And we all hate that anyways, right? I mean, I don't want to deal with that. And especially the type no, of job I, we have. I come to work sick all the time. I really do. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you on this. I, 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 well, you heard me, what, a couple of weeks ago. Well, I've worked with you forever. <laughs> Here's, you have a very interesting track record. If that's the right way to say this, but you used to. I'm not going to gonna waste my sick days on a sick day. <laughs> before you had a family, before you had a family, you were never. You were always sick. Like there was no way Jeff ever had any sick days left. He was. He'd be calling in sick just because he wanted to go do something and not come to work. Yes. Now that he has a family, he, I can't get rid way. of him. Like you're always at work. You, and like it doesn't matter. You could be dying. You had hand, foot. And mouth disease, or I forget what it was well, called. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't come to work. No, on you that, had on scabs all over yourself, mm-hmm. and you were coming to work. I'm mean, like, get out of here. You, you look like you're dying of the plague. That was highly contagious. So I, 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 did not, I, I could not come to work on that day. Now, I came after it had passed, which I still had the scabs and all that stuff. But, I mean, I'd used up, I think, a majority of my sick time during that time. I have a philosophy when it comes to sick. Like, when I'm sick... I can't do anything on days that I'm sick, right? So I might as well be at a place that I really don't want to be at, and that would be work, um, doing things. Whereas um, on days that I want to do something and I'm perfectly healthy and well, um, I, I, I would like to have a, a day off. So why not use a sick day on one of those days, you know? <laughs> what I mean. You were judging other company, other countries, because they were going to give personal days to people, and you're already you're admitting it. You do well, it. Yeah, it's called gaming the system. I mean, <laughs> it's not. You know, I mean, you, I I can have personal days. Hey, that's fine. You can have a mental health day, right? If you're mentally sick. Yes, I mean that's the thing. And, and I the mean, great yes. thing about California, law, it is it is ninety five ninety five, and uh, my friend's got a boat at the lake. Yeah, hippie, I, hippie <laughs> laws, hippie hippie laws, and all the other laws that we have in this country that protect us as employees. We just have to say we're sick. We don't have to. We don't have to do anything unless we miss three days, yeah. and then we have just to get make sure a note nobody, from a doctor that we can come back. No, just make sure nobody takes your picture and puts it on Instagram. You're fine. Uh, let's see here. Lying to your boss, obviously. Even if you know that you're going to look like an idiot, obviously that this is all common sense. Showing up unprepared, clocking in at all the wrong times. Sometimes the clock thing can be a pain Ooh. in the ass. So, yeah, my boss is good on me about that. I'm a bad clocking in or clocking out or guy. Terrible. It's, it's so funny worst, how we've, we've my gone to trait. this. Like, because, yeah, you and I worked at most no. people that work in this kind of business. It's a I went salary. For years but, without, I went for years without clocking in and clocking in out, out for a job. Even my previous job before the last radio job I had, I didn't have to clock in and clock out. The, this place, I don't know why, because it's in California. They have you clock in and clock out and because they got to watch their ass and make sure everybody's working. I mean, in full it's, honesty, this is not an eight hour a day job. I mean, we have to be working all the time. So if we're really going to, uh, <laughs> be real on this. Yeah. We, we work 24 hours a day. I mean, the, the job is part of our lives, the, the way that we do it. So it's, it's minutia to sit there and clock in and clock out. And I still, after 16 years, can't get past that. Well, it's hard. You get working and you get distracted. And then they're like, yeah. oh, well, you need to take a lunch by this time. Well, I don't You're take like, a oh, lunch ever. Sorry. I, mean, I just, we're just working, but I realize I have to. 
Uh, being negative, uh, don't be negative. You know, your nope. boss doesn't like when you're negative. What are we doing right now? Well, that's, that's exactly you. what we're doing yeah, right but now. Being negative, <laughs> Jeff. I'm being positive. <laughs> I love clocking in and out and uh, being on your phone. That I swear, if I was any kind of manager or boss or anything, if I saw somebody on their phone, oh my god, I think I'd well, it's like when you, I, I can't believe workplaces haven't adopted this simple piece of technology. If you go to eleven twenty two, they give you a pouch. And then they lock the pouch. You put your phone in that pouch, and you can't take it out because they have the key. Now, when you leave, they unlock it, take their pouch back, and then give you your phone. Now, you keep the phone on your person, so you know they don't have to check it at the door or anything like that. But when you leave, if you ever want to use your phone again, you gotta you gotta get them to unlock that pouch. But why do why we don't need to be work treated like children? We're adults. Why we don't workplaces? I listen. Yeah. If I owned a business, that's how I would operate. I'd be like, okay, there's your pouch. When you clock in. The, pou- the phone goes into the pouch. If you want to take a break? I'll unlock the pouch for you. A lot of people have lockers in their break room. You could put it in there so it's secure. And but yeah, if you're, if you're I mean, on they the do floor, it to kids in school. Working, you shouldn't do it. Well, they yeah, because they're kids. They're not adults. Adults should be able to manage this. Eh, but they don't. That's the problem. Like, and and anybody who's on their phone all the time, they're not an adult. They're a kid. <laughs> Let's face it. They're not doing adult things. If you're a manager of any kind, I don't care if you're working the drive through or you're, you know, uh, managing a hedge fund and you have to work with people. 805-543-3693. Biggest pet peeves you have. We'll pass them along. Spending four hours in a box together every day can make you say crazy things. Don't go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. So there's a dad in Minnesota that has gone viral because he knows a surefire way to stop a kid's tantrum. By the way, happy Father's Day to all dads out there. If you're a dad listening, happy Father's Day to you. If it's not Father's Day yet. If you're my dad, happy Father's Day. The card's in the mail. Now, you have two dads. My dad passed away, so I have a stepdad. But I call him dad now because he's that been was in a my very, life a long time. I was, I was, uh, I was uh, a girl in the 80s, and I was uh, uh, the star of a very popular sitcom. Yeah. I don't know if anybody I, even knows what you're talking about. Maybe My two dads. Knows. My that two was, dads. Yeah. Were they, and that was before they were gay, too. They were straight Yeah, men. they weren't gay. They yeah. weren't gay. Nowadays, uh, my two dads would be two gay dudes. I think the premise of my two dads was the woman who passed had no idea which one was the dad, so she gave split custody to both of them. So look how we were trashing women <laughs> back in, was that the 90s or 80s? That was the 80s, right? Yeah, that was the back 80s. Back in the 80s. Like, oh, you slut. We have no idea who the father is. <laughs> well, it's called a DNA test, all right? <laughs> well, they didn't have that in the 80s. Come on. So anyways, <laughs> wait, you're telling me they could use DNA to track down serial killers in the 80s, but they couldn't? No, DNA to... didn't come along till after O.J. Simpson. Must have been. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Professor Kingman. I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, I do trust everything you say, new. though. I do trust most D- things. DNA is relatively new. Like, yes, you could leave your DNA and all that stuff. Yes. And, and now they would be able to figure out which of the two dads was the actual dad. But that, what's the fun in that when you're, coming, when you're producing a cheesy 80s sitcom? Now, where I know two dads who are at odds have to raise a daughter. That you love both of your dads. Uh, your stepdad is a really nice guy, big sports fan. Uh, mm-hmm. But before we get to that, your your real dad, your your biological father, the one that you grew up with, uh, what is what is the, what is the one thing that you guys have in common, or the trait that you got from him? Sense of humor and sarcasm, and love of music. And when he came to your wedding, you had changed your haircut, but he had. <laughs> He walked he in hair. the door, and I knew ex- I, immediately that he was your. Oh dad. yeah, he yeah, looked like you, dad. like when I met you. Like you had long mm-hmm. hair to your shoulders. You were a little heavier. Uh, oh my god! I just I about hit the floor. I was like, holy cow! And I, he probably looked at me like, what is wrong with this guy? I'm yeah, like, I see oh a lot god. of my dad in my uh, daughter's face too. Um, now, now oh, you as, do? I, as, as she as she's growing a little older, I see a lot of his looks in her face, which yeah. is which is always fun. And then what's the best, uh, yeah. best quality he's of your a, stepdad? Uh, his on, pragmatic, he's his pragmatic, ma- pra- yeah. pragmatic approach to life, like always, like cooler heads prevail. I mean, like just never gets rattled, God, ever. I respect so many people that are that way so much. Ever. Yeah, I mean, the, the stuff the that he puts up with from my mom, it's, it's like... <laughs> Uh, I, I, I've heard I, you I'm, deal with your mom. I I'm a ma- Well, there's a reason why she got a divorce from the from my well, dad. <laughs> there's a reason she, they're married is because it rolls off his back. I mean, he's 
Yeah. He is a very patient person, that is for sure. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he's serious. I mean, I've been around thing. your mom, it's and like, I think she's a very wonderful person. I like her a lot. But, but she's very, like, yeah. if she asks you a question and you don't answer it, oh, my God, yeah. she is going to keep asking it. It's pretty funny. Just, you know, that's her personality. And so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, That of a bulldog, good. yes. Yeah. Yeah, those, see, are, yeah those, are, those are the best qualities in, in, in my two days. I say something nice about my dad's. Oh, and my, my, my biological dad can smoke a grip ton of weed, but probably needs to in order to level him out and bring him more to a pragmatic state. Do you think he still does? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what is his mode of transportation for the cannabis? He doesn't. He's retired. No, no. Mode of transportation meaning does he smoke it through a he, pipe, a bong? Does he eat it? Oh, does he do all he, the above? He smokes it. He's old school. Oh, okay. He smokes it through a bong. Oh, a bong? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, not a J. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's gone to the new new contraptions. But here's the thing: he grows his own. Oh, he does. So even, if you're even growing today, if you're growing you your buy. own, you don't have. Well, yeah, but why? I mean, he's but it's retired. so good. The new stuff that you're buying is oh, his is so good. His is great. Okay, well, he he's been. And I'll he tell knows you this. the guy, right? Like he's been doing it for a long time. Uh, you know, I mean, like you know, we're friends with Jason from Garden State Nectar, and he's given us samples and stuff before, and um, it's it's regulated when you're buying it at the legal level like you know what dosages you can handle my dad <laughs> it's like let freedom fly man <laughs> he's been doing this for years okay <laughs> like when you walk into the backyard you're like hit that wall of of skunk and you're like whoa <laughs> you know if he ever comes to visit you you got to go take him to meet jason so you guys can all hang out. He'd probably have that one heck of a good time. Oh, I'm sure he might. Like, seriously, my dad's like one of those type that would have no interest. He's like, because he's like old school to the point where he's like, you know, no, no I grow my own. Thank you. But um, I'll, I'll just, you know, he's a bit of a farmer in that aspect. Wait, but if know? somebody offered him a, a free sample, it would be. I don't, just I don't think. Out? I think he's, I think he's, he's so conditioned to his so and what the strain of his is that if, it's just. If we were sitting just, around in your backyard. And not that we would do this, but let's say I mean, we he would were, do it to be polite. And I brought out, uh, you know, some stuff to try. I'm like, hey, let's pass this around. He'd be like, no, I brought my own. God, you guys are the same person. Because He'd probably, I swear to God, I've been places with you and somebody tried to offer you a beer and you're like, no, I brought my own. I don't want to owe anybody anything. Exactly. That's Exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, it's the most annoying thing about you. I don't take anything from, like, when people... Invite you like people will invite me over for like a barbecue, and they'll be like, "Do you want anything to eat?" And I'm like, "No, I'm good." <laughs> Reminds me of Dwight Schrute when he saved Jim's ass when Roy was going to beat his ass, and he's like, "Nope, just doing what anybody should do. I will not accept any gifts." Yep, I, I do not, not accept I, any I, I do not. Want I don't want to owe, owe you. anybody. <laughs> and the reason why you get an obligatory twenty five dollar gift card every year from me is because I know you're going to buy me a Christmas gift. <laughs> Uh, well, I better say something nice about my stepdad in case he's listening. I doubt he is. But he's a truly wonderful person who has a huge heart and takes really good care of my mom. All right. When we come back, we'll get to dumbass of the day. Hang on. Careful. You don't want to learn from this. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ. Here comes dumbass of the day brought to you by California Diesel and RV. What do they do? Well, they work on pickup trucks and motor homes and they can manage fleet vehicles. If it's, uh, it's got a diesel engine on it, they're the experts, man. This is what they do. And they're people you can trust, and they're fair. And so you should stop by and see There's them. a reason why the parking lot's packed yeah. <laughs> when you pull in. Yeah, you might no, want to. Nobody wants to get serviced at, a, a empty repair, at an empty repair shop, and don't, that's not yeah. the case at California Diesel and RV. <laughs> don't wait till the last minute to get over there, because it may take a minute to get in there. But uh, go see them. California Diesel and RV, 1189 Pike Lane in Oceano. Hey, let's do dumbass of the day. Quack, 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 quack. We have a lot of time off. That's the problem. We have too much time off all day. I listen to Dr. Laura because I can't believe people continue to call because I think she's the meanest person on planet Earth. If you've never heard her, she's on AM radio. She's not even a shrink, but she acts like a shrink. She calls herself a moral leader, which that just description, self-described, floors me. How do you get to that point where you're in your life where you walk around your house going, you know what? I'm so right about everything. <laughs> I'm going to start taking calls. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Pope doesn't take calls. And she's so mean to people. Every conversation ends them with them going, well, you're right. I mean, I'm an absolute idiot. I am. I can't even believe I dialed these numbers in a row all by myself. <laughs> Can I have a T-shirt or something, maybe? 
This was my favorite one ever. This guy called, this is like a year ago, said his relationship of eight months wasn't working out. Dr. Laura goes, where'd you meet this woman? He goes, oh, well, I don't think that's a big deal, but I met her in a bar. She goes, well, you know what? There's your problem, sir. I don't need to hear any more of this conversation. You met a woman in a bar? She's obviously an alcoholic and a whore. (laughs) (laughs) I'm driving around going, well, that is ridiculous. I mean, first of all, some of us are just alcoholics, okay? (laughs) I don't know where this whole whore thing comes into the picture. I'm just there for the tequila special. <laughs> Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. Ah, doctors. You know, it's like, uh, you know, you got to find somebody you can trust. There's three people. Attorney, mechanic, California diesel and OB, and uh, a doctor. And if you can't trust those three things, your life could be very stressful or not be very long. But those are the people that you feel like could take advantage of you the most if you don't know what's going on. This poor family in Texas is suing a Houston area hospital and the doctor after the doctor gave their four-year-old a vasectomy during a hernia operation. He was in the groin area. Boy, I'm lucky. You know, who knows? I may have a vasectomy. I don't know. I had three. I've had three hernia operations in my life. The first then, one when I was like three. And I haven't had any kids. So maybe, you know, didn't accidentally knock up the wife. Maybe I couldn't. Maybe she was on birth control all those years for no reason. Or maybe it was the birth control that did it too, Jeremy. Yeah, maybe. He was in there doing a hernia repair and he snip snipped. Can you snap, snap back? Here's their attorney, Randy Sorrell. Before a doctor cuts any part of the anatomy, they're supposed to positively identify what that anatomy is and then cut. Here, the doctor failed to uh, accurately identify the anatomy that needed to be cut. Unfortunately, cut his vas deferens. I don't know if it really can be done, but if you've seen The Office, when he, Michael Scott invites everybody over to his condo, he gets in a fight with his Jan. girlfriend about snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap, having a vasectomy, then she wanted to have kids, and she wanted to have kids, so he kept getting it reversed. And, and re- yeah. But apparently, this attorney says the kid is young enough that he may... I mean, can you imagine this? Taking the... No. Taking this away like, from what's, you? Like it, what's I, the I, dollar amount that's attached to, to this? In I the mean, millions. I, I, in the millions. It's got to be. I mean, you're talking about making it so a child. You're just taking one thing. I I wonder. I wonder if the dollar amount standard has gone down on this because now you know there's educators uh, pushing you know gender reassignment on onto kids and and things like that. I mean, you know, like like, is it is it it, it ever been dulled by the process? Your human right. I, I don't think right is the right word, but for lack of better word. Right to yeah. have a kid. If you want to have a yeah. kid, we let right. anybody have a kid. Doesn't matter if you're all jacked up on meth in a trailer court in the South. Sorry, I don't mean to pick on the South, but at a trailer courts. But you know what I mean. We've all read the news enough. They usually end up in this segment called "Dumbass of the Day." But if anybody can have a kid, unless you have a doctor who you trust to help your son takes away his manhood. The family's biggest concern is how this might affect their child physically on the ability to have children in the future and emotionally on having to explain this to a potential partner who you're going to have children with. Let me ask you this, Jeff. Should this doctor lose his license? Should he lose the ability to be able to operate on other kids? Um. Yeah, I, I think so. I think this is a mistake that you can't walk you made. Back. You can't. You, walk yeah, back. you made this mistake. I mean, this is on your resume, right? So if this is on your resume, and say he gets fired by the practice that he's working for now, which he likely should and probably will, you go to the next one and you're like, hey, how come you you're, the job interview process, right? How come you uh, were let go from your last job? Oh, because of this. Would you take that person in if somebody else didn't have that well, on their record? And bottom line is. You know, you go into the operating room. I'm sure most people have had some sort of procedure where they knock you out, and they're like, "All right, take a couple of breaths in, or count to ten backwards, or whatever." You're you're trusting the guy that's about to cut you open, not to kill you or no. 
damage you permanently. Yes. So um, I don't have his name, but uh, congratulations. The Dr. worst surgeon, the worst surgeon in America. Yes. That, that could be his a, name. A kid's future away from him. You are Jeff and Jeremy. Dumbass of the day. <laughs> it's Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ. Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.